In his hands, he got all of God's children. In his hands, he got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. Thank you. 
They rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle. And when the cloud tarried, I don't care if it was a, a, a month, or if it was six months, or if it was six years. The cloud, long as the cloud stayed, they stayed. Uh-huh. Many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. Yes. And so it was. When the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. So they went, and they stayed, if it was six days, six months, six years, six hours, they formed that cloud. Amen. That was a type and a shadow of what we are to um, follow in our day, in the time we're living in now. Romans 8 and verse 14 said, As many as are led by the cloud, pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are what? The sons of God. The sons of God. They follow the cloud and we are led by the Spirit. Yes. Same thing, just in a different manifestation. Amen. And let's turn to... Um, 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And we go through verse 13. I am not going to. Uh, you know, if someone stayed in the wilderness when the cloud moved, you know, they stayed in the wilderness, their bones was bleached. They died in the wilderness. I'm not going to die in the wilderness. God is still moving. He said, I'm the, I'm the Lord and I change not. Right. He's still. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I kept people under the cloud, if I kept people under the leadership of the Spirit, I'm going to keep people today. I don't change. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11 through verse 13. And he gave some apostles. And he gave some, they fought in that cloud, and he gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Uh huh. And some pastors. Yes. And teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that's where the cloud has taken us. Into the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Till we come into the mouth, till we come into perfection. Thank you, Jesus. We're not being led into a dead end. But we're being led into the fullness of God. What? Another scripture in Hebrews chapter, I mean Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. And uh, I wanted to get 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 6. But Hosea 6 and verse 3. Then shall we know. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord. If we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. If we follow on to know the Lord. A lot of people started out, but they're not following on. They got sidetracked by a hop of grace. They got sidetracked by prosperity movements. They got sidetracked by this inclusive movement. They got sidetracked by the world and by the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. But we have got to continue looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We can't allow ourselves to get sidetracked, can we? Okay, if we follow on to know the Lord, stay with righteousness, stay with holiness, stay with truth. Uh huh. And he shall come unto us as the rain. He's coming to us as the rain. As the latter. As the latter. And former rain. And former rain. Unto the earth. Unto the earth. I'm still contending for the rain that's going to bring in the full revival, the full manifestation of the sons of God. Let's read on 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. Give me a little... Uh, Triple, knock off a little base. Okay. First Corinthians 15 and verse 6. After, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. After that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once. Jesus told over 500 to go to the upper room. This was after his death, burial, and resurrection. Now he's ascending, and now he's looking at over 500. And he told them to go back, follow the cloud, go back to the upper room and stay there until you can do it with power from on high. Didn't he? But out of over 500, only about 120 followed him and went into the upper room and stayed there until. They received the first fruits until they were the first to have the Spirit of God walking in them, living inside of them. And that's why, you know, ain't no place in God you can stand still. 
We've got to continue. It's a progressiveness. Amen. And we've got to continue growing in him. Yes. 120 out of 500. Even in the uh, in the uh, parables, Jesus was talking about the ten virgins. Five of them was wise and got extra oil. Yes. And five was foolish. And they thought what they had was enough to get them through. But we're going to have to follow the cloud and get something extra. Yes. What we got ain't enough. Wow. That oil that they were depending upon, it represented the anointing. And the anointing is what destroyed. Because of the anointing, the yoke should be destroyed. The burden should be lifted. Yes. And if we've ever needed anointing for this last day to stand up against this evil that we have entered into. We need a special anointing right now. Yes. Stand up against. And over in, I believe it's Romans 1, maybe verse 11, I'm not sure, about an importation. Read that one for me. So Romans 1 and verse 11. For I long to see you. For I long to see you. I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. That's what we need God to impart into us. Some spiritual gifts. Some spiritual ability. Some spiritual power. Don't we? And we, we got to continue to follow the cloud. I need an impartation. I'm grateful for what God's doing, but I need some more to be imported. Don't you? And it's, it's this anointing that Ephesians, that Luke chapter 4 and 18 talks about. There is a special anointing that we're going to have to have imported in us. And that anointing is in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. This is the end time anointing. This is that anointing that if we're going to face this generation, if we're going to bring deliverance to this generation, yes. if we're going to be able to help people, the time we're in now, we've got to have this special anointing that Jesus, that end into Jesus when he come being baptized of John, John and Jordan, when he come up, the heavens was open and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and let and remain upon him and he received an anointing to go forth and to bind all the demon powers that rose up against him. Now let's read. And, and we're going to have that now. We're going to have to walk in obedience. Holy Ghost uh, is given to them that what? Obey, Obey him. That's in Acts 5 and 32. Holy Ghost is not going to be given to people that walk in the flesh, do their own thing, don't pray, don't seek God. Holy Ghost is going to be given to them that obey Him. If we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. If we be willing, we can't just, you know, just fall in the clouds and say, I don't want to go, but because the cloud's going, I got you gotta be willing. You gotta be willing to pray. You gotta be willing to give. Be willing to live holy. Be willing. Don't don't look for an excuse why you shouldn't. Don't look for a way out. But be willing. Hallelujah. God blesses people that are willing to take up the cross. Willing to the willing to be a reproach. Willing to be talked about. Some of you talked about because you have long skirts. But thank God you suffer righteousness for his name's sake. If they talk about you because you're trying to do right, then you're blessed. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. But blessed are you when they persecute you because you try to do right. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, when a righteous person turned, to God and turn to obedience 
The scripture says every fool is going to be mended. Isn't it? Yes, yes. Every fool is going to be mended. But let's uh, read on here. If you be, if you're going to follow this cloud, you've got to be willing yes, to do whatever God tells you to do. Yes. You know, obedience. He said you got to love me. Somebody, what you mean willing? You got to be willing to put God first. You got to put him ahead of wife, ahead of husband, ahead of children, ahead of jobs, ahead of your own self. You got to be willing to let him be number one in your life. Huh? If you be willing and obedient and walk in holiness and walk in consecration, that's a separated life. Consecration means you separate yourself from the world. You don't look, dress, act, do the things that they do. You're consecrated. These are the kind of people that God's going to keep. He's not going to keep just anybody. This is. And over here in. Over here in the book of. The reason why I'm saying this is because this is a demonic generation. And we got to have something extraordinary to face this particular generation that we have entered into. This is a generation now that uh, Jesus spoke about this generation. I mentioned this to you the other day over in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, when he said, when these unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walked through dry places, looking for rest, he can't find him. Then they go back to his house and take with him what? Seven other spirits more wicked than themselves, and the last day of that man is worse than the first. This is a generation that's demonic possessed, and all this open stuff, and all this weight stuff, and all this pervertedness. You know something more subtle, something more evil has entered into this generation, especially when they're going after about children. Trying to get our little children in preschool to, to castrate them, to tell them, you know, this is evil. That's what he's talking about. Follow the cloud on into the latter rain. Follow the cloud on into the anointing. We have to walk in a special anointing today. The demons out there, let's read another one here in um, second Timothy, I believe, the second Timothy chapter. 2 and verse 20 through verse 26. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 through 26. But in a great house, but in a, go ahead. there are not only vessels of gold uh -huh. and of silver, yes. but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself uh -huh. from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. How many of y'all want to be a uh, vessel for God to use to live in. Don't you? What kind of vessel you want to be? A vessel of hay? You know, hay just poof, blows right up, strike a match to it, and it goes right out. Or you want to be a vessel of stubble? You know, you get a little fire started before you know it, it goes back out. But you want to be a vessel of wood, last for a little while, then it burns out. Or you want to be a vessel of silver, gold, precious stone. A vessel that is able to endure whatever the devil throws at you. Huh? Go ahead, finish reading that. Vessel of honor, uh -huh. sanctified. Vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart from to come out from among them. Be separated. Because I've set you apart so I can walk in you. I can talk in you. I can use you to go out there and reach the world. And you've got to be a vessel of honor. A vessel that's been tested. That's what Job, that's why God was able to use Job. He was tested. Job said, don't enslave me. I won't trust him. That's what Joseph was. He was a vessel that had been tested. And Joseph 
You know, he stayed faithful. God used him. Children of Israel, out of the furnace of affliction, they was called. But yet, those that stayed faithful, they entered into the promised land, didn't they? Jesus was tested in the wilderness. The devil come at Jesus and said, if you're the son of God, turn this stone into bread. If you're the son of God, do this and do that. Test it. God's going to have a tested people, a tried people. Not a people that just jumped overnight and just ran. But we're going to face this world. We've got to be purified. We've got to be tested. We've got to be tried as by fire. We got to make sure we're not going to get in the middle of a battle and then forsake it. And then when it gets hot, we run like one man in the Bible did and deny Jesus. How many want to be vessels of honor? Vessels that's being tried, that's being purified, that's being tested, that's being put through the fire, that stand faithful. Don't you want to be that kind of a vessel? Huh? We're getting ready because we're fixing to be tested like we've never been tested. But whatever you do, saints, if you've been tested, stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to God. There is a demonic generation that we're facing right now. Nobody has to tell you that. You're seeing how America is going down. You know, with God's will for them. Uh, the uh, last administration to go another four years, but you see what happened when when uh, they got rid of him by hook and crook, they got him out of there. And look how the nation's been going down ever since. But God is still on the throne. God is still in control. And he wants to impart something in us. Thank God we have had the Holy Ghost, but we need we need something to come with it. I believe mean, there's a scripture in Luke chapter three and verse sixteen and seventeen. Is this is what we need now? Something additional. Luke chapter three, I believe, it's verse sixteen and seventeen. John answered, saying unto them. John answered, saying unto them. I indeed baptize you with water. I indeed baptize you with water. Than I come in. The one mightier than I come in. The latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. Uh huh. He shall baptize you. He's gonna baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. And with fire. And we need to fire. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's something. The devil's afraid of the real fire. There's a lot of wild fire there, but the real fire exposes the devil. The real fire. Is going to burn up the chaff and get rid of and root out the hypocrites and get rid of the pretenders. Lord, I want a real fire. I want to, you know, not just a zeal, not just an emotion, not just an excitement, but the real fire. Yes. The real fire that was in Jeremiah. Jeremiah in a prison, locked up in a dungeon, but yet the word of God continue to come out of him when he was, they tried to shut him up, tried to lock him lock him off from the people but yet while he was down there while they, while they dumped all the uh, dead animals and while they dumped all the doves and while they dumped all the cesspool ses ses stuff jumped out down there and said look at me serving you, look at what I have, I have suffered Look at all these madness and all this stink and all this darkness and all this filth. Say, uh -uh, I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to my mouth no more. But that word in Jeremiah was like fire. Shut up in this moment. Jeremiah couldn't hold his peace. Way down in the dungeon, in the darkness, in the midst of the cesspool, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah couldn't help but to speak. Peter said, we cannot help but to preach and to teach because the fire God has been put in our hearts and our bones. We can't hold our peace. Church have lost the fire. Church have lost the boldness. Church have lost 
the zeal. Put the fire down here. Give us a baptism of the fire. There is another baptism that's fixed to be granted, and it's going to be the fire of the Holy Ghost. Finish reading that. And he shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost and with fire. And stand is in his hand. Stands in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. He's going to purge his floor. And will gather the wheat into the garden. Yes. But the shaft. But the shaft. He will burn with fire. The flesh. He's going to burn it with fire. Hallelujah. Is that all of that? Fire unquenchable. Fire unquenchable. Something you can't put out. When this move of God is fully birthed, it's gonna burn. And ain't nothing. Just like in the book of Acts. They couldn't they couldn't stop him. They put him in prison. They stoned him. They persecuted him. They went from one village and one city to another. But they couldn't stop him. One man gave him, they gave away one of the uh, great uh Lawyers of that day said, man, if, if, if these men be of God, we can't stop it. We can't quench it. If it be a man, we could have, we should have put this thing out a long time ago. But the more we try to put it out, the more the fire spreads. If this is of God, you better be careful. God said he's going to bring something in that can't be quenched, that can't Oh yes. You better get ready. Man, this demonic generation is not going to have no might. This demonic generation is not going to be able to stop what God is bringing forth in this last generation. Was that all that? Thank God. That's why we need the real sanctification. You know, somebody said years ago when I first got saved, said them sanctified people. I said, what is that? You know, they don't do stuff. They don't chew tobacco. They don't smoke. And uh, I said, that's what being sanctified means? They said, yeah. But I, 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 as I grew up in the Lord, I, I realized Jesus said, Father, sanctify them with thy truth. That word is true. The word sanctify means make them one with us. Even as I and you, you and me, make them one in us. Sanctify, set them apart from all of the filth. Set them apart. Let there be a difference between the clean and the unclean. Between, see, God didn't have a sanctified people. Set apart, different. A city sits up on a hill. A light that can't be put out. A fire that can't be quenched. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. You better get ready. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This demonic generation, they ain't going to stop this. That's why they said, you know, seek, didn't it? Yes. Seek. Yes. Huh? Amen. And Continue to seek until what you find. Knock and keep on knocking. Keep on knocking till the door open. Ask. Keep on asking until what? Till you receive. Try one woman from Canaan. She said, "Oh Lord, I have a daughter needs help. I'm not going to be denied. I'm not going to leave." Your disciples rejected me. Others rejected me. But you can't. I'm going to stay right here. Jesus said, oh, woman, because you got a faith that won't be denied. Great is, is the miracle that you're fixing to get for your daughter. We got to come into that place where we are not going to be denied. We got to launch into that audit. You know, what I'm saying is, when you launch a shuttle or you launch a rocket, it takes most of the fuel just to get it out of the Earth's gravitational pull. Don't it? You know, what you're talking about, gravitation. This Earth, 
when you when you uh when you jump up and something pulls you back down. That's the gravitational pull. And people don't know what that gravitational pull is. There's a lake in the heart of the earth, a fire. And out of that lake, you know, it, it creates a gravity. It pulls things back, back down. Darwin's, was it Darwin's theory? I believe that's the one. But it pulls everything down until you're able to break through this gravitational earth pool. You're going to always be, but, but man have figured out a way. They got it into a rocket and they uh, launched it and they was able to reach beyond earth's gravitational pool. Now the moon, don't, you go to the moon and just bounce all over. The moon don't have that gravity. It don't have no, oh, uh, in the middle of it, so it can bounce all over the moon. But Earth, you, you know, there's something that keeps, well, that's the way it is. Sin, the devil, something that keeps pulling you down when you're trying to get closer to God, trying to get out of the flesh, trying to get in that spirit. Somehow, when you got to have, that's why you have to keep knocking, keep praying, keep fasting, keep digging, keep on until you break through the flesh, until you break through this, this natural realm. And when you enter into the spiritual realm, then you're like on the moon, you're floating. The Spirit of God is there working through you, flowing through you. Thank God you're in honor now. You're in heaven now. You're in a place where nothing is putting you back. Nothing is holding you back. This is what God wants. Keep seeking. Keep pushing. Keep striving. Keep pressing. Keep asking. Keep knocking. When you break through this natural pool, when you break through this world, Break through the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, all this natural stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't stay in this, this, this realm, this, this uh, natural uh, level. You got to, if you want to get into another level, you got to put some more fuel in there. You got to put some more prayer in there. You got to put some more striving. Put some more pressing, press, strive, seek, knock, ask, continue. Don't be denied until you break through that old reel that's keeping you down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the problem, is, is trying to find that breakthrough. Amen. Trying to get that breakthrough. Isn't it? Isn't it? We need to be into, we need to we need to graduate from preschool. Graduate from uh, first grade or whatever level that we've been in for years. Follow the cloud. The cloud takes us into the ministry of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, till we come to the fullness of Christ, till we come to the nature of the statue of the fullness of the Son of God. Until Christ is walking in us, living us, until we look upon as the light of the world. And the world is in darkness. When they look upon you, they're going to see that you have pulled. You broke through this gravity. You broke through this, this darkness that covers the world. Cross darkness of people. But yet, you have broken through. Thank God, the light has now come. Jesus did it. Went on Mount Transfiguration. And he didn't, that transfiguration didn't happen from the outside. Something inside of him began to grow. Something inside of him transformed him into a light. Well, they couldn't even hardly look upon him because something within. See, the kingdom of God, they said the kingdom of God, uh, Lord, show us the kingdom. The kingdom of God is in man. Right, man. You know, one scripture says it's among man. But no, it's in man. It's not among us, but it's in us. Y'all never read that? Rev uh, Romans chapter 4, 14 and verse 17. It speaks about the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is within us. Yes. Out of your belly. Yes. Huh? Yes. So what? 
how your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. We like the woman constantly going to the well because we ain't got no well in us. We don't need to be outside sources. We need the well in us. That's what the kingdom of God is. It's when God comes and gives you know, this Jesus at the at the uh, Jacob's well. And while he was at Jacob's well, there was a woman that came seeking a drink. And when she comes looking for a drink, the, the well was deep and Jesus was sitting there at Jacob's well. Wasn't he? Yeah. Give me the drink. And the woman said, the water is deep. And you don't have nothing. He said, give me something to drink. And I'll give you, I, I'll give you a well of life. I'll give you living water. We need to be able to give the world living water. The world right now is dying. The world is dried up. The curses upon this world. Demons are taking this world over. We need something that will quench the thirst of man. And we're not going to get it. They're not going to get it through money. They're not going to get it through government. They're not going to get it through religion. They're not going to get it through all this other stuff that the world has offered them. Jesus said, if you drink of the water that I should give, I would give you a well in you. You know, Jacob's well, down inside of that well was a, a teaching. Yes. A, a underground flow, a stream constantly flowing and it never went dry hundreds of years when droughts and uh, everything else was dry they could go to that well and and that well would take care of whole villages whole families take care of anybody that came because in it was an artesian something that constantly flowed a, a river a river in that well somebody dug a hole and they tapped into a river that was running under the ground. And they tapped into it and it never ever ran dry. Well, that's what God said. Out of your bed it shall go rivers of living water. When on surface everything looked dry. On surface everything looked dead. On surface everything is dying. But down inside there is a river. There is a river of life flowing out of me. Make the lane to walk. generation that there is one generation that the gospel is going to be preached in the whole world in that generation one generation is going to carry the message to the whole world what if we are not uh, we, we could be the generation I'm believing that we are the generation 
that's going to count it and it's going to do a quick work and it's going to cut it short and it probably be just two or three years. And I believe we are that generation. Listen to me. We are that generation. Yes. Y'all remember reading the scripture where? Well, let me say this. That somebody says, Brother Blue, how can we learn all these languages and how can we carry this message and this and that? And it takes years to, we have to get Babel. And we have to learn all the different languages through Babel and all of that. But they didn't, they didn't have no Babel or oh, then the book of Acts. The Bible said they spoke. Yes. Every man heard them speak in their own language when yes. they was born. Yes. It was 17 different nations were there. And they heard them speak fluently in their own language. They said, the, the wonders, of, the mysteries, the works of God, the wonders of God, we do hear them speak in our own tongue. Yes. Now there is a tongue, that a mother tongue that comes from heaven that everybody speaks in heaven. That's the Holy Ghost tongue. Yeah. But there is languages that was poured out also. Stammer lips, a mother tongue, a, a, an unknown tongue, and also languages. God going to pour out upon us this last move, and it's going to be, the, when we are up preaching, we're going to be preaching in English, but people out there going to hear it in Spanish. They're going to hear it in Chinese. They're going to hear it in other because this is what God's talking about. I'm going to do a quick one, and I'm going to cut it short in righteousness. How are we going to get to that? How did Philip get there? God took it. God transported it. I'm going to do a quick one. I don't have time for all, to go through all this man stuff. I'm going to do a quick one. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Huh. Well, thinking like me. God is beyond our boundaries. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything. We able to ask or think, I'm going to do a quick work. I'm going to, pre I'm going to have this gospel preached throughout every nation, every tongue, every kindred. It ain't going to take no generation to do it. Time is running out. That's why. We've got to have a quick work of God. Well, I'll just show you something here. Read Revelation. I believe it's in chapter 14. This may be something, a little something that I read also on Tuesday night. The Revelation, I believe it's chapter 14. And uh, I don't know exactly what. Maybe it started verse 13. I'm not sure. Let's, let's try it. 14, it started in verse 13. And I heard a no, no. voice. Revelation chapter 14, and let's start at verse 6. And I saw another angel fly. Listen to this. I saw another angel fly. In the midst of heaven. In the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel. Listen. Having the everlasting when? When? This is where we're at in Revelation chapter 14. This in Revelation chapter 13, it speaks about the mark, the number, and the name of the beast. Don't it? But here in chapter 14, when all of that has been instituted, when all of that has been uh, enforced, where you can't buy, where you can't sell, unless you take a number of the name or the mark of the beast, then you, you, you're restricted from sin, from traveling, from doing anything. But right here in the next chapter, it speaks about, read that again. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel. Having what? The everlasting gospel. What kind of gospel did Jesus preach? Huh? He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Jesus had an everlasting gospel. He said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Finish reading that. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth. To preach to them that dwell on the earth. To every nation. To every, there it is. To every nation. Everlasting gospel is being preached during the time of the mark of the beast. Everlasting gospel is being preached during the time of the, the false prophet. Of the time of the Antichrist. 
the everlasting gospel is being preached. That is right in your Bible. Go ahead. And to every nation. To every nation. And kindred. And kindred. And tongue. And tongue. And people. And people. And people. Sing with a loud voice. Sing with a loud voice. Fear God. Fear God. I've been telling you, walk in the fear of God. Fear God. Don't fear these governments that tries to get you to, to sell out to this perverted box. Don't fear these governments that tell you that you, can, you can't serve God, that you can't worship God the way, in spirit and truth, the way he taught you. Don't fear these governments that try to put a, 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 a you know, a hindrance in your life, that try to tell you like they told Peter, did not we tell you to keep your mouth shut Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Holy Ghost is going to be given to them that obey God. Yes. yes. Man tell you to sell out compromise. But God said, you got to stay with the truth. you got to follow this cloud. Go ahead. Fear God. Fear God. And give glory to him. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment. For the hour of his judgment is come. Is come. You know it. You can see it. You can see it. The hour of his judgment is come. And worship him. Worship him. That made heaven. That made heaven. And don't you don't you bow down to some image? To some image. Don't you bow down to some world government, some world system. You fear God. And you fear him that made heaven and earth. Don't you bow to this uh, apostol I mean this, this antichrist. Amen. Don't bow down to this evil system that man is trying to ease in right now. Don't you bow. Don't you give in. Don't you take down. Yes. That's why you got to be tested. We've got to be put to the fire like the early church was. Like the men of the Old Testament was, so that we would not betray him. We would not deny him. Right. Finish reading that. And worship him that made heaven. Worship him that made heaven. And the earth. And the earth. And the sea. Not the beast. Not the false prophet. Not the Antichrist. Not the beast coming up out of the sea. Worship him. Go ahead. And the fountains of water. Uh huh. And they followed another angel. They followed another angel. Saying Babylon, Saint Babylon is falling. Is fallen. False religion is going to fall. Uh huh. It's fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Well, I then went to bed with her. When I then practiced their evil. Uh huh. And the third angel followed them. Third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, see, the beast has already revealed himself. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his head, all of this has been instituted. All of this has now been given. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Which is poured out without mystery, without mercy, yeah. without, you know, God is going to, I mean, people that sell out to this world system, they are going to taste of a wrath and an anger and a judgment that they have never had taste before. Without, right now, we get storms, but yet people survive. We get earthquakes, but people survive. We get all these different things that happen. People survive. But God said, I'm going to bring a judgment that is going to be without mercy. I'm going to bring in the pale horns and men are going to be thrown right into the lake of, right into a hell fire. Right. Go ahead. And he shall be tormented with fire. He shall be tormented with fire. And brimstone. Brimstone. In the presence of the holy angels. Presence of the holy angels. Of the land. And the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment. Smoke of their torment. Ascended up forever and ever. Listen, ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest. No rest. Day nor night. Day nor night. Who worship the beast. Who worship the beast. And his image. Preachers ain't preaching this kind of preaching. That's right. Shrimp. 
have eyes to see but can't see, have ears to hear but can't hear. The darkness, the God of this world, applied in their mind, but they can't see. They preach this old uh, blessing and something to try to pacify people. We need to know where we're at. That's true. Go ahead. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whoever received the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments see, of God. Peter said the saints ain't going to be here. But the saints are going to be here. God said, with your, in your patience, you possess your soul. None of your pain. Patience comes through tribulation. Saints is going to be here. They're going to be tested. They're going to be tried. They're going to be purified. And thank God, what God allowed you to go through is going to develop patience in you. And through that patience, you're Jesus. going to see how you're going to be able to endure these things. Uh-huh. Keep the commandments of God. Here is the patience of the saints. The endurance of the saints. He that endured to the end. Here's the endurance. Some people can't endure nothing. Can't go through nothing. Talked about get out of church, get mad, get attitudes. You know, the COVID lift up a little bit and people ran back out there. Doing the same old damnable things. Knowing in their heart that if they don't serve God, what, what's going to happen to them? But the God of this world got them so blinded. Their conscience is being sheared. They can't see how that this system is already underneath the right, right now being set up among us. That one is putting. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments. Here are they that keep the commandment of God. The commandments of God. They ain't done away with. Uh huh. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. Right here is what's going to sustain and keep us in these last things. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Uh huh. Right blessed, right blessed are the dead, are the dead which die in the Lord, which die in the Lord, henceforth, henceforth, yea, save the spirit, yes, that they may rest from their labors, rest from their labors, and their works do follow them, and their works do follow them. So you see, it will be all gloom and doom. He says, on this rock. I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail. He's talking about the false prophet, the man of sin, the beast coming up out of the sea, the Antichrist is not going to prevail against this church that I'm raising up in this last day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't hold down. I think this is enough for right now. But I'm trying to tell you. Follow this cloud. Let God lead you on into the realms of perfection. Let Him lead you on into the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Until we become sons of upon this rock. Are you building? Are you building? Upon this rock? Are you building hay? Excitement? Emotion? Are you building wood? Stubble? Or are you building consistency? Continual prayer? Obedience? Submit yourself to God. Regardless of what comes, you don't let nothing discourage you. Yes. you. You keep pressing on until you get past this uh, this uh, gravitational pull that the world has. Yes. Till you get into that orbit, till you get into that place and the realm of the spirit, yes. where you operate from the spirit, you operate from that realm where Satan has no dominion. Satan has no authority because you operate not out of the soul, not out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. That's what Jesus, out of his spirit, is how he drove demons out. Through his spirit is how he conquered. Through his spirit, I do nothing of myself, but the Father that put it in me, he doeth the works. 
what the Father do, that do the Son also. Thank God. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to open prison doors, to set the captive free. This is the generation that the world is going to hear the gospel. This is the generation that all that's written is going to be fulfilled. This is the generation that the blind is going to see, that the deaf is going to hear. The words of the book, this is the generation. Don't you want to be a part of it? Yes, yes, yes. Stand on your feet. Oh, hallelujah. Family, stand on your feet. I'm not knowing what we'll to do with this. Hallelujah. We're just Man. tapping into this. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because we just tap into this. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I told Brother Chuck, come prayer morning or night. Amen. Do you know? I'm going to come to prayer tonight. All right. All right. I'm going to tap into some more of this. Yes. But if not, Brother Chuck, always have a, yes. a message. Yes. A gospel. Yes. Something. That helps strengthens us. Help, but you know, we, we, we ain't one accord. That's right. And he comes out and he adds to it. So I, however the Lord leads us tonight, get in here tonight. Don't stay at home. Don't let the devil trick you. That's right. People think we can relax now. No, no. There's something out there. It's we in the end, it's going to be one, when they say peace and safety, remember, it's going to be something else. So I'm telling you, don't let your guards down. Amen. While the world is, I, you know, the world is fixing to go through some hardships. God's people, we can, we can prepare ourselves for these things, but he wants us to prepare ourselves to bring deliverance, yes. to bring conviction. To, to, to be ready to help throw in that throw out that uh, that life going to throw out that the people are going to be asking for help why what, what, what hope do you have look at everything falling apart you're going to be able to answer them you not only answer them but like Paul said our gospel comes not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the power and demonstration of the Spirit, so that their faith will not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Yes. Thank God, a gospel is going to be preached to every nation, every tongue, every kindred, to all people, and these shall the end come. I ain't going to do a quick work and cut it short in righteousness. Get ready. Yes. There is a move of God that's about to come in the midst of darkness. Get ready for it. Come on, let's talk to God here for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads, saints. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We know this is you're speaking to us this morning, Lord. God, Lord, help us, Lord. God, we don't want to be my God turning circles in the wilderness, Lord. Following on our flesh, following our own minds, following our own spirits. God, going after my God, the things of this world, Lord. But God, Lord, we want to be able to follow the pillar cloud, Lord. To follow the fire, Lord. God, help us this morning, Lord. As we break up our grounds, Lord. We know this is you speaking to us, Lord. God, you're grooming us, Lord, for this revival, Lord. God, you're getting us ready for this revival, Lord. You're letting us know, Lord, that it's going to be birthed, Lord, by the Spirit, Lord. God, it's not going to come by way of flesh. It's not going to come by way, my God, of this old carnality, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we want to be part, Lord, of this move, Lord. We want to get out of the gravitational pull, Lord, of the of sin, of the world, of Satan, Lord. God, we know this is not a time to put it in park, Lord. God, we know this is not a time to relax, Lord. God, we know this is not a time, Lord, to give in to our carnal pleasures, Lord, to give in to our outer man, Lord. But, God, you, you're giving us something to strive with. You're giving us something, my God, to pass 
press, Lord, to fight, Lord, to continue, Lord, knocking, to continue seeking, Lord. God, we know, Lord, uh, that this is going to come through the straight and narrow way, Lord. God, in Jesus' name, help us, Lord. God, we know, Lord, that there's going to be an end-time revival, Lord. There's going to be an end-time people, Lord. But it's not going to come, Lord, by this prosperity message. It's not going to come, Lord, by this old carnality, Lord. But God, Lord, you said that which is spirit is spirit, and that which is flesh is flesh. But, Lord, you let us know, Lord, the kingdom is going to come from within us, Lord. God, help us, Lord, to continue to get our houses in order. Help us, Lord, this morning, mighty God, to break up our grounds, Lord. Help us, mighty God, Lord, my God, to travail in the spirit, Lord. Help us, mighty God, Lord, to wax valiant and fight, Lord. God, this is not a time, Lord, to lay down. Lord, you're calling us in arms, Lord. You're calling us, my God, in arms, mighty God. Help us this morning, Lord. God, this is not just another message, Lord. God, you said we shall be a root out of dry ground, Lord. You said that we should be a light in the midst of darkness. God, you told us, mighty God, it's going to be through our hands, Lord. It's going to be through our feet, Lord, that this everlasting gospel is going to be preached, Lord. God, I want to be one of those, Lord. God, I don't want to be disqualified, Lord. I want to be qualified, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, help us this morning, mighty God, to take grit, Lord. My God, to stand firm, Lord, to continue to fight, Lord. The best is yet up ahead, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be obedient, Lord. You sent them that obey you, Lord. My God, shall be... But shall be led on you, Lord, shall be called the sons of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, cause, my God, for us not just to be obedient, but to be willing, Lord. To be willing, my God. Lord, put it in us, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God, help us to fight like we've never fought before. God, you said we can't do it in all call, my Lord. But you said in the spirit, you're causing us to fight in the spirit. You're causing us, my God. God, in the name of Jesus, put oil on the order. Put oil in our lamps, God. Not just for now, Lord. But we need extra oil, Lord. God, we need gas in our tank, Lord. To make it past this gravitational pull, Lord. God, we need something inside of us, Lord. To cause us, mighty God. To get in that place, mighty God. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me to do my part, Lord. Help me to do my prayer, Lord. Help me to do my Bible reading, Lord. Help me, my God, Lord, to fast and pray, Lord. Help me, mighty God, Lord, now more than ever, mighty God, to give ourselves over, Lord. To give our minds over, Lord. To give our spirits over. To give our lives over, Lord, now is the time, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, my God, that we can be one of those that you bring forth this end time anointing, Lord. God, Lord, you said you're putting something inside of us to face this old demon generation, to face these powers, mighty God, in our jobs, Lord, to face, my God, this old wickedness, my God, this is the land today, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I want to follow, Lord. I want to follow you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. I want to follow and know you, Lord. God, I want to do exploits. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us this morning, Lord. Not to be just hearers. Not just to be, my God, spectators. But, Lord, to be doers, Lord. God, to be participants, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, Lord, for not leaving us without, Lord. We thank you this morning, mighty God, for giving us the pathway. My God, help us to obey you and walk therein, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and clap your hands, Lord. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for this exhortation. We thank you, my God, for this message. We thank you for this word, this on-time word, Lord. God, help us to take heed to it 
and build therein, Lord. God, you're causing us to build on this foundation, precept upon precept, Lord, line upon line, Lord. And you're building it with the word, with the scriptures. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you this morning. Clap your hands. We thank you this morning, Lord, for being an all-time God. In Jesus' name, you might be dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget tonight, prayer 6.30.